Good evening. Tonight, we have a 10-year-old girl who got ripped off by Chase Bank. We got some beautiful World War II love letters. An interesting world gave us a report on the original, I guess it's called phone autograph. And we have some very intelligent rats. We also have a new dog for Mr. Trump, the future president. The dog's name is Spot. And you saw the movie Gladiator, right? Oh yeah, we're going to have real gladiator events right there in the original Coliseum in Rome. All that and more tonight on Interesting World News. Good evening. It's Monday night, November 18th, 2024. And first off tonight, we have a 10-year-old girl that got ripped off. Let's check it out. I've been waiting to hear about this story involving an Arizona family. They say a well-known bank is holding their money hostage. Yeah, we were talking $2,100. It's not like it's a few bucks here. That money actually belongs to their family's 10-year-old daughter. On your side, it's Gary Harper here. You looked into this issue. Very interesting here. Yeah, cute little girl. Um, yeah. She made the $2,100 by raising and selling chickens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good for her. Yeah. Uh, this family does live in a rural part of the state, and they thought getting their daughter involved and raising some livestock would help teach some life lessons, and it has. But they did not expect this to happen. Here in Thatcher, Arizona, about three hours southeast of Phoenix, life moves a little slower. At 10 years old, Kinley Maynor enjoys rural life by raising and selling chickens. I just thought that it would be, like, fun because when they're little, they're so cute. Kinley proudly showed her chickens at the Graham County Fair and eventually put them up for auction. And now 1200 and I have sold it, sold it, sold it. In the end, her six chickens sold for a whopping $2,100, and the treasurer of the Small Stock Association wrote Kinley a check, which was electronically deposited into Chase Bank. So we cashed it, didn't think it would be a big deal, and the next day, Chase closed Callie's bank account. And Kimley's check was also frozen, meaning she actually did not get that $2,100. Kimley's mom, Callie, spent hours on the phone with Chase trying to get answers. Chase apparently told the family that the check was suspicious because bank officials looked up a phone number for the Small Stock Association and claimed it was out of service. Their ultimate response is, that, sorry, Kinley's not going to get her money back, and there's there's nothing we can do unless we can verify that check. The guy who wrote the check has gone into Chase three different times saying, hey, this is me, you can verify it in person, and they said the only way to verify it is through that number on the phone. And get this, a year later, Kinley still doesn't have her $2,100. I was a little bit upset because I deserved that money and it was supposed to be mine. She's a 10-year-old girl who worked hard for this money and we think that she deserves to get the money that she rightfully earned. So the family contacted On Your Side and we shared Kinley's story with Chase Bank. And just a few hours after we did, Chase contacted Kinley and her family, apologized, and said they were overnighting a $2,100 check. I was surprised when I got it, but also I was excited. The Mainers say it only happened with the help of On Your Side. Oh, oh no, man. Chase Bank. You know, there were $679 billion. And they were trying to take $2,103 from this little 10 year old girl. Shame on you, Chase. Next. Okay, WGEM in Hannibal, Missouri. That's right. They got some love letters, World War II love letters. Let's take a look. This isn't such a bad place, and they treat you swell. And if there was any loving from you, I can definitely take it. Ha. Love always, Chester. 
The Salvation Army Family Store's manager, Tina Iffert, and local journalist, Megan Duncan, have been getting to know the late Chester McMean, a World War II soldier, vicariously through a collection of letters he sent to his wife during his time in the Philippines. This was an amazing find. The first letter was dated on September 11th of 1944 and the final letter on November 27th of 1945. Oh, that one's kind of neat. The same. They were addressed to McMean's wife, Alma Bernice Mogdlin. It will seem a lot more like Christmas as a tree always adds to the atmosphere. Ifert says she found the letters months ago, buried away in the donation pile, and not a trace as to who left them there. And there's a lot of history, so I um, wanted to find who they belong to. The Salvation Army handed the letters over to Duncan, who has been searching for the family members ever since. In her voice. Duncan says McMean's letters portray a heartwarming love story, personality quirks and all. From the very beginning, she was looking for a sewing machine. So throughout the whole thing, he was like, honey, you will find that sewing machine. But, so I just always crack up because she like spent the whole war looking for this perfect sewing machine. <laughs> but that said, she was amazing because she also worked and she, she was like, she was running things at home. Duncan says these also carry significant historical value. He was talking about rations in the States. He was talking about cars. So what happened when Chester returned home? Duncan says the couple did end up having that happily ever after. He talked about how, you know, when I get back, well, we're going to open a business. We're going to do these things. And then when you look into their lives and you look at their obituaries um, and you look at the pictures, like all of that came true. Wow. It was a very heartwarming story. And I guess they got to do a lot of those things. And he survived. Very heartwarming story. Whew. Okay. Interlasting World News has investigated this thing called a phone autograph. And what it does, we're about to see right now. Okay, that was pretty cool, you know. Uh, the guy that was recorded in 1869, so the guy was a hundred years old, and that means he goes back to 1769. So we have empirical empirical evidence of life forms on Earth in 1769. That's just wild. That's a really cool story. Ouch. Next. Okay. Bloomberg. What do they report? Yeah. Yeah. Rats are intelligent. I didn't know that. Of course they're intelligent. They're trying to tell us that rats are smart. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's because I'm so old, but... I thought we kind of knew rats were smart back during the Greek days, the Roman days. Hell, cavemen should have known all about rats. That's where we come from, isn't it? But anyways, they say that rats, scientists, uh, imagine places they have been. <laughs> oh, really? They imagine places they've been. Yeah. And that they can navigate through their own thoughts. Like, like, let's go to Fred's house and they're thinking, what does it look like to go to Fred's house? And they can do that in their own brain without GPS. Now that's something we can't do. We gotta have GPS to go anywhere. So I guess that's a pretty good story or not. Anyways. Next, BBC reports that Donald Trump has a new dog. The dog's name is Spot. Let's take a look.
Well, what did you think the spot, huh? Yeah, that's what we need, more spots. He's got a spot. Everybody's got a spot. We're going to have spots everywhere. Spot the robot. Okay, can't get enough of that. Next. Okay. Everybody's seen the gladiator, right? Well, Euro News reports that in Rome, we're going to have gladiators. Let's take a look. Are you not entertained? After a more than 2,000 year hiatus, gladiator fights are coming back to the Roman Colosseum, albeit reenacted. This spring, officials are looking to capitalize on enthusiasm sparked by the long anticipated sequel to the movie Gladiator. The fights will be mock versions of the historic battles, but the arrangement is still angering local housing activists concerned about this promotion from Airbnb. They say the role of short term rental companies is sparking over tourism taking away affordable housing from locals and students. Advocates for underserved communities called the new arrangement a disgrace, arguing it will cause over-tourism and displace locals throughout the city. The Coliseum will host the historical reenactments through a $1.5 million deal with Airbnb, with the goal of promoting a more conscious tourism in concert with Ridley Scott's Gladiator 2 film released Thursday in Italy. Eight people selected in a lottery will be able to participate in the stage gladiator fights after the site's closing time on May 7th and 8th. Users can apply for the lottery starting on November 27th. Airbnb and Coliseum officials say the sponsorship will revive an educational program inside the ancient Roman stadium, exploring the history of the amphitheater and gladiators. Advocate. Wow, what do you think, gladiators, man? Okay. So I understand the story with, uh, you know, BB and B and, and the movie and the poor people and the artist. And so what was people having nice places to live and not paying for them? I, I don't really, they're running people out. I know this is live in the chat. Tell me how that works. Like, how, how is this bad? I mean, it's bad. It's got, of course it's bad for somebody. If there was homeless, if these places wasn't rented out and homeless people were living in them and we're running the homeless out and we're making money, or now students can't afford to go to school because how does that work? Don't they stay at the dorm? Anyways, this is a live show. Somebody in the chat, explain how that works to me. I really, I really don't know what's going on there with the whole thing. So, next. And I guess that concludes this interesting world news. Did we cover everything? The 10-year-old, the love letters, the first recording, the intelligent rats, spy, and we did the gladiator thing. <gasps> Guess what? I got a little extra for you. We've lost 10 days. The world. Uh, yeah, we went from the Julian cal calendar to some other calendar. And when we went to that calendar, we decided just to get rid of 10 days. And those 10 days, I can tell you what they was. It was from March 11th to March 21st, 8th. Uh, 1582. Not that long ago. 1582. Yeah, you would think it must have been around B.C. No! They re realized that whole thing they did back then was stupid. And none of it, not stupid, but it just hadn't been well thought out. And uh, and we should have had evidence they, they should have known. So maybe they was in, in a weird sense stupid, but yeah, regardless, I, the rest of the story is, is they didn't even do it in March. You know when they did this, getting rid of the 10 days? In October. And the reason they did it in October is because they didn't want to mess up the holidays. So here we are at the holidays, doing it in October, but it's about March, which happens. Anyways... That's a little extra. 
And this show's a lot of fun. It's, uh, what is this? This is number six? Yeah. And it's live, and I'm sure I screwed it up a lot, but try talking for 10, 20 minutes without screwing up. It's kind of tough. But I, I want to just tell you right now that I love you, and I'm out of here. Okay, baby, this is fun. I love the live shows. You guys, hit stop. Come on, hit stop. I, oh, I didn't look good. Anyways, hit stop. I'm out of here.